and we'll get going. Okay, Josh, you want to go first? Go ahead. Hi, Josh. Um, we've obviously heard that Jimmy Anderson won't play. There's also some thought that Stuart Gordon might not be selected. Can you shed some light on that? Yeah, and I think um, just with the, the build up everyone's had, um, I think the guys just want to uh, make sure everyone's perfect to go. Um, no, Jimmy's not going to play, but he is fit. Um, it's obviously a very long series. Um, and we want a guy like that to be available to play as much part as in it as, uh, as possible. So I think it's just a bit precautionary. Um, we bowled well yesterday, uh, bowled again today, and um, so bowled a few spells in that, that couple of days we had as a warm up game. So he is fit, um, but the guys are just being um, a bit precautious. Yeah, he's good. Um, he's good to go, I think. Obviously, he had a, an injury at the end of um, the summer uh, in England, um, but uh, he's obviously been coming back well from that. And again, um, you know, the way the build up's been here, it's been um, a little bit um, challenging in certain ways. Um, so, I haven't had that time um, playing those warm up games as, as much as good. But uh, again, Bobo in the Nets yesterday, faced him in the Nets, and uh, he looks pretty good. If there is no story, and then Jimmy, like it's, it's a pretty young bowling attack, I guess. So if you look at that and, and kind of have to back them in and, and encourage them to get in how hostile it's going to be out here tomorrow. It's um, thanks to the field. Um, we're confident in this. That's why the guys are here. That's why, um, you know, the selectors have picked this squad. Um, and there's some, some fantastic performers. Of course, Gordon Anderson are brilliant performers. For a long period of time, and um, they're going to play a huge part in the series as well. So, um, you know, whichever 11 we take the field with, we'll be very confident. Former player, one player, says that this Australian team doesn't have the same aura, but there's no member of your squad that's ever won here in Brisbane. Does it perhaps have the intimidation factor to you guys going into the series? Um, I think anytime you come and play in Australia, it's, it's a huge challenge. Um, you know that uh, as an English team, um, you know, history tells you that, um, and that makes it exciting. Um, you know, I think Australians um, tend to play well here. Um, obviously, lost to India recently at this venue, so it proves it's not impossible to beat Australia here. Um, but we know to, to be able to do that, we're going to have to perform close to our best. Um, I think as a side, we focus a lot on ourselves. Um, you know, the opposition are, are a fantastic team, but we know if we, we bring our A game, we're going to be there at our best. Yeah, I think um, that's the challenge of international cricket is, is anywhere you go in the world, you're going to have to adjust um, you know, at some points technically and other points tactically. Um, you know, the skill of of being able to play international cricket around the world is to adapt to the conditions that, that are put up in front of you. Um, so coming to Australia with no extra bounce um, compared to other places we go and play in the world, um, that's what makes the preparation um, very key. And I think you know your first 20 balls as a batsman, um, when you get out there into the middle um, to try and assess conditions and and to you know play accordingly as to, to what the conditions are on any given day. Um, I think you look around the the best players who ever played the game are the guys who can assess conditions very well, and, and that's what all of us have been trying to do, and, and we'll be trying to do it into the game. You know, just on that, Ollie Robinson, just talking about the goals, but uh, first thing that you back, how crucial are the runs from the last six years for the one that actually gives a bit of things in the city? Yeah, I think that's that's quite a big trend, I'd say, in, in the way cricket's changed over the, the years. Um, you know, a lot of bowlers working a lot harder on their batting and um, those lower order runs that have been um, crucial in a lot of games that uh, sides have had success and I think there's an English team as well playing in um, you know, bowler friendly conditions at times in England those lower order runs are, are vital um, and again in, in conditions such as this if you can eke out extra runs from the, from your lower order um, that's going to go a long way to um, helping you win the game um, and also guys um, so you got a set batsman who was in with the bowlers, allowing him to bat for longer as, as well. So all of the bowlers work, um, you know, not just an England team, I think uh, all teams around the world, let say bowlers work a lot harder on their batting now, now than maybe they used to. Um, Josh, obviously the fifth test in Perth has been confirmed by the IB there. Is there a preference from the English side of things? We want to play that the final test? Uh, no, not at all. And you know, I think you know, sitting here today uh, with a match starting tomorrow, 
um, that feels a, a long way away. So um, I think all of the squad's focus is, is very much on tonight. It, it is an actress, so there's nothing to lose. Uh, there's everything to lose in that sense. But do you feel like, given the record um, the Aussies have here over you guys and the fact that, you know, they're going, the men as well, they're going at full strength. You know, Jimmy's not going to play, etc. Do you feel like you do have a little bit of a mentality in coming, nothing to lose, Chris, Chris and the Aussies at the Gabba, because all the pressure is essentially on them? Yeah, I guess so, to, to an extent. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose. I like you say we've got everything to gain. Um, but we go into every game wanting to win, wanting to play well. Um, but we know to do that against Australia here, you, you've got to be at your best. So um, and nothing much really changes from the way uh, we need to approach the game. Um, but no, certainly we've, we've got nothing to lose. Um, but that doesn't mean that we accept losing. Um, you know, we, we want to play well. We want to get a result out of this game. Ross, there's been such an intense flair on your captain, um, Michael Bourne, for the face. This will define his captaincy, Joe Colbus. It will define his captaincy this series. He's the best bat. He's had so much going on off the field. Are you guys just consciously don't feel like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders going into the series? And, um, you know, some of you have all seen the guy just, just aware of that and, and how he's been supporting through, through the series. Absolutely. He needs lots of support. Um, we know how well it, the form he's been in with the bat uh, this year. Um, so we must support him as, as the rest of the the score, we know he's our best player with the, with the bat, so um, but we want to support him and, and help him uh, share that load. But he's been in, in an incredible form um, this year, especially. So um, you know, I'm sure he comes here determined to continue that. Um, but you know, it's, it's a massive series for him. He, he, of course, he, he feels that that is a, a defining series. In, in my eyes, I um, can't say it would be over such a long period of, of a great career that, that he's he's had and, and will still have going forward. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a massive moment, isn't it, as a, an Englishman to come here with your, your team to captain a side in, in Australia. So um, you know, we're determined to, to you know, help um, sort of shed that load as, uh, that is on him. Um, but uh, no, it's a, a full squad effort. You know, it's the players in the, in the team that the supports team. and everyone around him. We'll do Josh and then one more in the room and then we'll go to the two. Um, will you take the dogs back from I think based on kicking the last test of year and we'll kick? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. I'm, I'm preparing to, to keep wicket. Um, but obviously it's a yeah, there's a, a strong squad here and um you know, wait to see. Josh, we've seen some ferocious bowling spells here, go back eight years, Mitchell Johnson terrorising the English side. You feel like you've got the bowling attack, but you can turn it back on the Aussies if they really go aggressive in this first match. Yeah, I think you know what's important is to to again assess conditions and, and bowl well. What, what's required um, on the pitch, obviously, um, say the the weather's been different to what usually um, coming into a game is. So maybe the pitch may play differently. Um, but you know, certainly someone like Mark Wood bowls with express pace. Um, you know, someone who's nice to face in the nets and um, you know, can can really crank up. So if that's what's required, and, and he's in the eleven now. Um, know that's a possibility um, but you know, generally speaking anywhere you go in the world you know, good bowlers don't miss a length and they're consistent and they continually keep pressure on batsmen um, I think that as, a, as a batsman that's what you least like to face so I'm sure all our guys will be very much focused on that as well. Okay we're going to go to Zoom we're going to start with uh, James Cole from Sky Sports News in the UK a couple of questions from James and then we'll go to Simon Mann at the BBC to perform him so go ahead James. Hi, Josh. So just missed that at the top. Could you just clarify the situation with James Anderson and, and, and how that affects the bowling attack and what your decisions are? Yeah, as, as Jimmy's he is fit. Um, he's been bowling um, for a while. He's obviously bowled well in the nets yesterday. He's bowling again today. Had a few spells in, in the, uh, the sort of uh, truncated warm-up game that we had. Um, but I think just a precautionary measure um, with an incredibly long series ahead um, and making sure that we just... I think the guys are just playing it a little bit safe. And so, how uh, fit is Ben Stokes? Can he he bowl his full allocation? Can he play as a, as a, a full part bowler? Yeah, definitely. You know, Ben's Ben's fit to play. Um, he's been performing very nicely in the nets and that that warm up game. He looks he looks fit. He looks strong. He's, he's bowling well. He's, he's hitting the ball well as well. So. Um, you know, it's a, a massive plus, obviously, for us as a side with, with Ben being available to, to play. Um, he brings so much to the team, not just 
um, with his skill set uh, on the field, um, his character we all, we all know about as well. So it's, a, it's great to have him back amongst the ranks. It's a, a big lift for, for everyone in the dressing room. And finally, yeah, for me, a- with all the sort of the uniqueness of this series, is any of the gloss been taken off, off this Ashes series with everything that's gone around? How are you feeling going into it? Yeah, excited. I'm incredibly excited. I think um, it is unique uh, in terms of the way uh, a build up to, to an Ashes series. I think individually, you know, speaking about my own experience of five of us coming from, from the World Cup and then doing sort of two weeks away from the main squad as well, we were already here. So, you know, that's an incredibly unique um, way to lead into the series. And obviously, the weather's been challenging for the amount of of practice guys have, have had outside and um, but, you know it, it's different as a professional you, you adapt to that uh, and come 10 o'clock tomorrow morning um, you know, everyone is, is excited and ready to go thanks james let's go to simon mann bbc and then uh, dan bretton i'm still on mute there simon, simon you're on mute sorry about that Sorry. Joss, was Jimmy always going to miss Brisbane or has something happened here that has made the medics cautious? I don't know, to be honest. Um, you know, from, from my experience, all I've seen uh, since I've been here is, is Jimmy's been bowling and, and bowling well. Um, we um, faced him in the nets yesterday. Um, hopefully face him again today. It's, it's a great challenge as, as practice going into a test match. So um, no, he, looks, he looks good to me, but um, uh, sorry, I can't answer that question for you. And Stuart's 100% fit, is he? Looks it to me, yeah. And just one final one from me. We've got two decent men as captains. Is this going to be the friendly ashes? Uh, and it has to be at the minute as well, because we're sharing a hotel. So a um, few awkward lift conversations. You know, lifts are awkward type at uh, the best of times, aren't they? But uh, yeah, like you said, two, two great men as, as leaders of, of their teams. Um, I think over the years and the way cricket's evolved, I think teams, you know, international teams have, have got closer, haven't they, with the sort of franchise tournaments that you share a dressing room with. Um, but I don't think that um, it would be any different in terms of a competitiveness on the field. Um, you know, I think, like you said, as a you know, bowling captain for Australia and, and a batting captain for England as, as well, I think that, you know, two captains going sort of toe-to-toe will, will be a great um, you know, one for the, the fans to watch as well. And then one each going forward. So we'll start with Dan Bretting and then Will McPherson, Rory Dollar. Go ahead, Dan. G'day, Josh. Um, just a question about um, the fact that we now know, with beyond all doubt as of yesterday, that there's going to be two pink ball tests in this series. Um, I know you said you've sort of got to adapt to whatever that you whatever you get. But, um, yeah, how, how different is it thinking that you're going to play a pink ball test in Adelaide and then one wherever the fifth test is? Yeah, I don't know. That's the first um, I've heard of it. You, you're telling me I've also heard that might be a, a case, um, but you know, it doesn't really hold any weight sat here on the day before the, the test starts, the first test. So um, all the focus is on that. Thank you. Let's go to Will and Rory. Hi, hi Joss. You've been, a, you've been an international cricketer for a long time, but this is your first Ashes tour. You've obviously played in two Ashes series at home. Is this kind of... Do you consider this your ultimate challenge as a as an international cricketer and is, is this the one you kind of dreamt of growing up yeah absolutely I think uh, an English player um, to come and tour Australia in the ashes is is um, certainly on your bucket list um, I remember being here on the Lions tour in, in 2013 and, and came to watch a few of the um, the days here in Brisbane of, of that first test um, so I think you know, like I say when you, you see it up close you understand that you know, the intensity and the hostility of this environment and, and um, you know, it's a great shame in this particular tour that there won't be the travelling Barmy Army support, which is, is always um, huge coming to this part of the world as well. So, um, yeah, certainly as an individual, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about the challenge. I know it's, it's going to be incredibly tough, um, but that's you know, kind of what you, you want to play the game for. Um, so, um, you know, I really expect just throw myself into it as much as I can and I know I need to perform my best to, to be successful um, and uh, yeah excited for the challenge Rory and then we'll finish with Chris Stops 
Hi, Josh. Talking about uh, performing near your best, it, it's only a few weeks ago since you uh, got after a bowling attack of uh, Hazelwood, Stark and Cummins and gave him, a, gave him a bit of treatment. Does that leave you in, in pretty confident mood going into this series, knowing it's this, the same attack, albeit a different format? Uh, no, really, I don't think it has much any bearing, to be honest, on, on that. Um, I think just individually uh, for myself, you know, I felt in a really good place in the World Cup. Um, I think technically and, and mentally, um, you know, I felt very comfortable at the crease. Um, and I know playing a different format now, but you know, my setup doesn't change and, and the sort of feelings you want to have as a batsman. Um, you know, so certainly they were something I can carry forward uh, into, into this series. Um, and then again, as, as an international cricketer, as I mentioned before, you, you adapt to the, the situation in front of you. And last one, Stoxy, go ahead, mate. Hi, Joss. Um, I guess a couple of years ago, some people might not have expected Jimmy to even be on this tour, but do you, do you get the feeling that whatever happens over the next five tests, that he's still hungry to carry on into next summer? Yeah, it certainly looks that way. Um, no, I think it seems that age is just a number for Jimmy at the minute. It's, it's, um, it's obviously in fantastic shape. Um, his skills are, are brilliant as always, and if anything, he still seems to be trying to improve and, and learn new things. And um, certainly that hunger doesn't seem to be wavering at all. He still gets just as grumpy if he, he bowls a bad ball or, um, and that his competitiveness in, in anything he does, um, let alone on the cricket field, is, is incredibly high. So um, certainly see him wanting to continue for, for as long as he can and um, don't feel like there's anything in the way of him doing that at the moment. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone.